What is going on, FA Nation? John Mebbe here with James Grande. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Game Day Playbook Show. Today we're taking a look at the 13-game main slate on Friday. Your guy, James Grande, will be on that Friday playbook. So we're taking a first look here to get you all ready for this main slate. We'll be back again live at 4 p.m. Eastern time to give you all the latest news and updates regarding this slate. But for now, James, uh, how are we doing, my buddy? Doing good. Um, 13 games, a lot of games, a lot of baseball. Um, I always, first thing I always look at on these big slates is to see if Coors is up right. on the slate because, like, 13 is already a lot. And then you factor in Coors, and it's like, well, it doesn't matter, I guess, about anything else. Like, well, the first question you ask yourself is, like, is Coors, this is like the most viable. Uh, slate, you're going to get a potential cores fade because right. there's so many options. But is it worth it? But uh, no cores on on today's slate. Looks like there could be a few spots where there's um, some poor weather or one singular spot there could be potential weather. But uh, it's seemingly the case like every summer in Kansas City where it's just like yeah. you can just be a meteorologist and say, oh, there's potentially rain. It's like being a meteorologist in Florida. So yeah, Atlanta, uh, same thing. Like, yeah, like, you'll I'll, be right. Yeah. Showers, right? Like always, always possible down there uh, yeah. in the South. I agree with you. I'll just pull up the draft board here now because I think my biggest takeaway, we have 13 games with some okay at best pitching matchups, like nothing yeah. spectacular here um, on this board. Like Ronald Blanco is your top priced pitcher here. But he's going up against a Minnesota offense that obviously um, super talented. Now, you know, came back from the suspension, didn't miss a beat where he picked up, shut down Oakland, but it's Oakland here. Minnesota is not Oakland. Minnesota is an offense that uh, has a lot of power potential. A lot of guys from the left-handed side of the plate. You know, we were expecting some regression from Ronel Blanco. If you just kind of looked over at his fan graphs page down the line here, um, you know, that could certainly come. I feel like it's a pretty risky spot at 10-1. To go ahead and pitch him, you have Dylan Cease on the road against Kansas City. You know, Cease obviously has been pretty good. Tanner Houck's at home against Detroit. I mean, looking at this pitching slate, especially sort of the top half, uh, if you're looking to target starters here, do you find yourself looking to spend up for the top couple of price guys? Or, like, where are you going on this one? I mean, I don't think any of them are bad. Like, if you just look at the 9K and up tier. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously upside with all of them, but I don't think you look at any one particular and you're like, ah, yes, that is the guy. Like, Blanco obviously has as much upside as anyone, uh, considering sure. he does have a no-hitter on the year and he came back and was great um, after his suspension. You mentioned Cease. Cease has been much better this year. This was like two years ago, Dylan Cease, where he's yeah. missing a lot of bats and not really – giving up a lot of damage. Although as you say that last two starts, he's been a little shaky, yeah, but for offenses, right? I would he say yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta Yankees in back-to-back -back games. So like definitely not what Kansas city is. Although Kansas city is obviously improved at least the top. Anything with Bobby Witt, right? You know, you got to be yeah. worried about that guy. You know? uh, I do like Tanner Houck in the form that he's been in. I mean, he's one out away from seven consecutive quality starts mm -hmm. uh, in that Tampa Bay game. Um, the strikeouts have been pretty consistent of late. I, I would mostly all year. Um, For a guy that has a one nine ERA and a sub one whip to have five losses on the year. Right? Yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough, that's a tough one. Um, so like, I'm okay getting to how come I, I like uh, Tanner Bybee quite sure. a bit. Um there's been a lot of up and downness to his season, though, and Washington still is a team that Durable, doesn't, you know, doesn't strike out. Um, despite like against right-handed pitching, like they don't rank highly anywhere, but also they again have a low strikeout rate and a pretty solid walk rate at like nine yeah. percent. So, you know, Bybee is fine. I mean, Brian Wu one strikeout. I mean, again, that's the Washington effect, but um, like he has a ceiling, but ninety two hundred. Hey, you, you're gonna you're gonna you go up against Kevin Pillar right now, you got and, and Luis Renjifo. I mean, that's the best one two punch in baseball. So, right. like, I would say they're all there's a I would say there's a case for all of them, but none of them stick out more than the other. 
and Pablo Lopez here again, another guy who's just really in a in a funk. At least yeah. three starts. Has- hey, well, you know, Washington rocked him too. I, I have no interest in like on it. I, again, I I pose that question to you because you're right. Like maybe outside of Hauk and and you know possibly Cease. Like I really do not have interest in the nine K above grade. First pitcher I went to is Ronaldo Lopez against Oakland. He's eighty six hundred dollars. Um, you know, I understand, uh, you know, for 70 pitches got pulled at four and two thirds, uh, in that last outing for him. But I, again, I think this is a, a better spot for, for him, uh, against Oakland here, um, you know, in the, in the mid tier. I mean, I think that you could, you know, again, start there, Jose Barrios against Pitt, $8,200. I like that spot as well. Um, you know, I think that's kind of where I, I go with the two guys there. You know, I'm not going to go Walker Bueller. He hasn't been great. We talked about everybody else. So um, for me, the 8K range, I kind of just started with Lopez and uh, and Barrios there. Maybe you throw Strom in a bone. Um, but that was about it for me. I might push back a little bit on the Bueller front. I don't yeah. disagree that he hasn't been great, but like was great at home against Cincinnati, then had to go on the road to face them again just seven days later. Mm-hmm. And we know how great American can play. Obviously, there's a long layoff, right, between when we last saw Walker Bueller before these previous four starts due to the Tommy John surgery. But 91 pitches is very encouraging to to get him to. Colorado's, you know, by all accounts, been pretty solid against right-handed pitching um, on the year. I mean, they rank in the in the middle of the league when you look at uh OPS but then when you look at their road splits this year and I think that's like something that we naturally have to factor in just given going from cores to anywhere else uh they're 24th in OPS they have a 25% strikeout rate away from Coors Field this year so um we just saw Bueller two starts ago with a seven strikeouts against Cincinnati yeah I do think there's a, a little bit of a ceiling if we're going to factor in Whenever he's full, fully healthy, which I assume like later in the summer, you know, we'll start getting like peak Walker Bueller again. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is an elite pitcher that we're getting for sub nine K in a pretty good sure. matchup um, in a very good pitching pitching environment. With, I mean, let's face it, more win equity than anybody on probably on the on the slate. So yep, that's fair. I, um, I would that would be my only pushback. Sure. There. Yeah, I, I guess for me, you're right. Obviously, the good start against uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati had, had been re- has really struggled against righties uh, this season. Colorado, though, is right kind of there with them. A 25% strikeout rate at 248. Uh, batting average against righties is ninth in baseball um, just overall. Actually, that's those are their overall numbers uh, this year against right-handed pitching. Uh, Colorado, 10th best batting average, just 246, though. Not like it's jumping off the page. 26% strikeout rate, still fourth highest. So, um, yeah, I, I guess, like, I, I'm more so waiting for, like, the big game out of Walker Bueller, and maybe that comes here at home. And, and under 9K, like you said, he's a guy that, when going good, would be, you know, about $1,000 more expensive. So Those numbers uh, are also, I mean, you factor in the course, right? Like, your, your sure. overarching thoughts on right-handed pitching is – Kind of like not yours, just saying like you look at overall numbers is kind of skewed because they play their home games where they play their home. Games. Yeah, I mean the, honestly, this year that them as a team, they haven't really had any drastic home road splits. They sit right in the middle of the pack. Uh, batting average wise against righties, they're fourteenth. They're fourteenth in ISO. Uh, bad woba, uh, they're never a woba team. Twenty first, and the strikeout rate still twenty five percent. That's on the road uh this season for them yeah they have like ryan mcmahon this year is better road numbers than home numbers. Right. like i you know they have they're just a, a backwards team this year that just isn't <laughs> very good in general so uh yeah you know you bring up some good points on on bueller there uh going down a little bit further under 8k range i, I like going soriano against seattle here at 7300 uh so you want to go look at some underlying numbers we already know the strikeout rates against right-handed pitching uh for seattle they're the highest uh in baseball here but uh, Jose Soriano kind of like secretly pitching pretty well. His XERA is 358, right around 361. So he's not pitching any more poorly than like his numbers would suggest. 36 XFIP, 35, as I mentioned, expected ERA, a near 9K per nine. The walks are a little troublesome, almost at four. But, 
you know, for the most part, he's, he's pitching as his numbers suggest he's pitching. Um, and there's some good strikeout upside here on this matchup for him. Yeah, I think that's the most appealing part. 7,300 uh, has been getting pretty deep into games his last two starts, too. I mean, six and seven and two thirds. And in, in, I mean, Cleveland's been Cleveland and the Yankees are the two best teams in the American League, and the Texas Strangers are the defending champions. So, uh, with like one of the hottest hitters in baseball in Court Seager right now. So, like, pretty yeah. good, pretty good starts back to back. And now we get the, the strikeout prone Seattle team. So, I, I agree. The only other name I'd probably, uh, I, I do have a little interest in Luis Severino. Um, okay. I know the Mets are what the Mets are right now, and everything is imploding around them. Um, but Arizona is obviously good against one side of the split and really bad against the other side of the split. And this is the side of the split that they um, have struggled in 24th yeah. in OPS, just a 132 team ISO. They don't strike out a ton, but sub 300 Woba as a team as well against red handed pitching. So, um, Severino definitely like quietly having a resurgent year. And yeah. it's, it's for him, it's unfortunate because the Mets are the, biggest disaster in the game right now um and it's not really like close uh but 8k um pitching at home i i really don't hate severino the only thing obviously you do kind of dislike is like can they yeah, maybe no Lindor, yeah maybe no Lindor, maybe no pete alonzo in the lineup yeah for the it's like one here. nothing law a one nothing <laughs> loss like it's that's definitely in the cards yeah montgomery obviously hasn't been any great shakes here either so no. it's not like uh you know they're they, they're mets might even be favorites in this game right. uh, when you know, it comes down to it um any other uh value pitchers you have any interest in again it's a big slate so there's plenty of options but you know anybody for you here um i don't i don't hate bailey falter um, Toronto doesn't really strike out. He doesn't really strike guys out, but it's really hard not to like, like the depth that he's been pitching in the games. Sure. Um, but obviously it's Bailey falter. So that could falter at any moment. Oh, um, yes. there's probably not a lot else, um, that you can necessarily look to i guess tobias myers would be something um considering it's the white Sox, four and a third and, and four innings in two of his last three obviously like pretty stretched out if you look yeah. at the and, and it's the matchup against the white Sox, right they just showed i just saw a graphic one of their two lefties and andrew benintendi has the lowest iso or the lowest is the lowest Woba in recent memory, the second lowest Woba at this point in the season, like the history of the M uh, the MLB. And that's like one of their two lefties they have in their lineup. So yeah. um, Tobias Myers as a dart. I mean, again, sure. it's not like exciting, but 6,900 nice. And um, there's not a lot of us, other stuff you'd, yeah, I agree with you. Moving on over to catcher again, a spot where we generally look to find uh, the value. Um, Sean Murphy for me is still just sitting there in the mid mid three Ks. He's got a lefty in Sears. Uh, I know the Atlanta offense really hasn't looked great, uh, especially now there's no Ron Lacuna there up at the top of that lineup. Riley's been struggling. Matt Olson has been struggling, but they do get Sean Murphy back. Um, you know, this is a this is a pretty good price tag for what he can be at the plate against a lefty in Sears. Yeah, I mean. Former team, you know, revenge in baseball. It's always such a great narrative um, when you're trying to hit a 100 mile an hour fastball. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay getting to whatever Braves catchers in the lineup if both are in the lineup. I know obviously Murphy's the the cheaper uh, between him and Darno, but if Darno's in the lineup, I'd I'd probably toss him in that same bucket. Yeah, that's fine by me. And again, we'll figure out as these lineups come live. Again, we'll be back here 4 p.m. Eastern time to break down the main slate for everybody. Once again, we'll get with some official lineups um, as they come out. So we'll, we'll get a better idea of where the value catches are going to be uh, on this slate then. Moving on over to first base. Again, we have 13 games here. So uh, a loaded player pool. Um, you know, we don't we don't have to spend too much time saying why the color of the uh, Dodgers 
uh, bats are good against uh, Hudson here, obviously. So uh, if you're looking at this top half of first base, uh, what are some of your other targets for tonight? Mm, not much uh, above 5K. I, I guess, like, I know I touted um, Bailey Falter, but Vladdy at 51 in the sure. at our end of the split, although he's been notoriously better against righties. Um, I don't love much. Uh, maybe like O'Hearn at 43, although there is a lot of um, re positive regression coming Aaron Savali's way eventually, I guess, is the is the answer there. Um, Nathaniel Lowe against Sixto Sanchez at 42. Yeah, Sixto like, first run Sanchez, you know? Like, yeah, Sixto uh, first run Sanchez. Jake Bowers um, against Eric Fetty, 4,100. Um, and I was going to mention Gary Sanchez, a catcher as well, um, sure. for a full Milwaukee stack. Uh, 4,100 for Bowers. I know he's struggling a little bit, but he hits in the middle of the lineup against right-handed pitching. So Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't mind that. Yeah, Fetty winning 20 games in the KBO last year blew my mind. But, uh, you know, he's, he's back. And uh, the MLB has found some interesting success so far to this, but I, I don't know if that's long-term sustainable for him. So um, other value plays, kind of like scrolling down. LeMay is there at 3,300 if he continues to bat in that lineup. Um, could go there. I, I don't think Jose Urania is very good. So Berger or, or Bell, if you want to plug either of those guys. Uh, in for Miami. I know that offense isn't anything great, but uh, you got them there. You got uh, Carlos Santana against Blanco as well as a cheap option. So um, again, uh, we'll see what these lineups are. I'm kind of with you though. Um, not too much outside of the Dodgers guys for spend up a couple of obvious mid tier guys. And I definitely like Texas against Sixto Sanchez there, uh, especially as we move across these positions uh, at second base. Uh, we do have Albies versus Lefty and Sears. If you are looking to spend up, he's $5,200. Uh, Semyon's 5K um, against Sixto Sanchez. Those are clear the top two for me. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I know Altuve is like, it's crazy to like, why would you pay 56 for Altuve when you could just play Albies in the elite split and Semyon against Sixto? But like, I wouldn't completely write off the Astros in general, if Pablo Lopez is going to pitch the way Pablo Lopez has. I mean, he has been absolutely atrocious in three straight starts. So uh, there is, I think, some merit to getting to Altuve, who's been pretty good for a pretty bad team. Probably a much sure. lower roster ship as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, and low. On, um, and then I have never, ever had a problem playing Andres Jimenez against a lefty, and I'm not going to have that problem here against Patrick <laughs> Corbin either. So yeah. if you want to play... Jimenez, who has been running a little bit more lately, we know that he has been pretty good against lefties throughout his career. So that hasn't necessarily, and we know what Patrick Corbin has been against lefties in, right. in his own right. Like he can't pitch against or either just anything lefties, on the mound yeah. for him. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, again, if you want a boring play, Luis Yaraz there against Watkins 48 as well. Um, Toronto bats against Falter, if you're not a believer uh, in him there. Uh, any other mid-tier options for you? Again, um, you know, let's kind of work our way down. We, we identify the top guys. Any mid or value options? Yeah, I mean, Bryce Terang, but, I mean, he's always live to steal a base. Mm -hmm. um, if and when he gets on, just so much speed there. Um, can't go Garcia. He's back in a slump. No on, like, Glaber. No on Estrada, Rojas. Would you go um, IKF? Yeah, IKF's been pretty good. And um, just in general, like getting on base lately, yep. a little pop, which has never really popped for him, but yeah. it is right now. Um, so, sure, I, I do think IKF is a little interesting. I definitely think, I mean, Brandon Lau at $3,200 is a little bit interesting. Um he faces off against a righty and Albert Suarez. So Albert Suarez, I mean, tr going to be used as a traditional starter after starting the year in that role. Then he goes back to the bullpen, but 80 yeah. pitches in his last outing. He looked really good, but um, Brandon Lau for a, like a potential. I know he's, I get it. He's been terrible. Um, Triples in two of the last three. Not what you'd expect that of uh, Brandon Lau there. No, but. Uh, but maybe like signs of life in general. I mean, this guy hit 40 home runs, right? Was he, did he hit 40 a couple, couple years, years ago? A couple years ago, he hit like 40. 
forgot how to bring it back. A lot of injury, play. definitely a lot of injuries um, over the past few years. Definitely some poor play, but he's the second base Joey Gallo. You know? He is a uh, shout out Joey Gallo, new father. Um, sure, sure. Pen, not, pending, Mark, pending. not Mark Davis. Not Mark, not Mark Davis. Davis. Yeah, not Mark Davis. Um, yeah, so that, I I don't mind that price thirty two hundred as you mentioned as well. Um, you could go David Hamilton if he continues yes. to be in the lineup for the Red Sox at thirty one hundred. Again, not not a guy you're expecting power out of, but four steals over the last ten. He sold seventy at I think it was Double A a couple of years ago. So like very capable, um, at least of late of getting on base, and then you know he's got the green light to run uh, when he's there. Um, anything else for you here? Not a second, no. Okay. Uh, third base, then. Uh, Jose Ramirez against Corbin. Uh, we played him a lot in course. He did not let us down. Uh, can certainly run him out against Corbin if you want. This is the stronger split side for him this season as well. Um, there's a reason why he's $800 more expensive than the next <laughs> third baseman on this list. Um, but, yeah, far and away, Ramirez is the top spend option. Yeah, I mean, it – like – this price is definitely based on like this tear that he's been on. And I'm not going to say it was all cores induced because it wasn't because he was on this tear pre cores. Um, but his price is very expensive, but it's basically like you go from cores to facing Corbin. Oh, you're basically like, it's just an extension of it again. Right. right? Like it just, we get all the same. It's like, Oh wait, I just played all this cleveland for the last week and now i get to do it again that's great because they're keep continuously um paying it off so. there's not even really a lot of cleveland guys that you want honestly but like we'll probably talk fry and freeman here right like, dude fry freeman ramirez move on like fry freeman ramirez move on right? like, that's, like, that's, yep. that's what we're gonna we're gonna hit them in the outfield um i didn't even see if they get if freeman if fry had catcher eligibility on this he, they, he did not just he did not him. yeah they keep going back and forth on uh, giving it to him and, and taking it away uh, this year, Corbin against lefties. Uh, yeah, they're doing they're doing the damage against him again. That's no no surprise. Uh, righties, rather, they're doing the damage against him. No real surprise uh, that I don't know if a five sixty slugging is good or not, but it feels good. Um, <laughs> Mid tier options for you. Uh, I don't mind Prady's just for the power at forty six hundred dollars. If you wanted to to go there. Um, Bregman homer again today. If you think Lopez keeps struggling, he's 41 uh, could go in that direction as well. Yeah. I mean, um, both the guys you mentioned, I don't, I didn't think you mentioned Austin Riley. I know I, I didn't, I'm skipping him for now. I know. I know it's been, it's been a little disappointing after whatever it was that he was not on the injury list for um, because he wasn't, he wasn't injured enough for the injury list. Even though, games. He's just not on the IL, just missing games. So. Seems like a mistake, but uh, neither here nor there is the time to discuss it. Uh, he has not looked great, but we know he has notoriously been good against lefties. So, yeah, obviously, good ballpark to hit in, good good split. So, I'd throw him in there. Um, I know, like, we didn't really mention Renhifo. I know that he is. Very good against left-handed pitching. Yeah. He is also in 137 at-bats, hitting 343. So, like, I'm not totally against playing Luis Renjifo because he also has 12 stolen bases. So, yeah. if this is the better split to seal off. So, if you yeah. want to play him against Brian Wu... I don't hate that. The don't numbers hate that against uh, numbers against righties aren't awful for him, right? It, but they're just they're it's not just, lefties. It's not they're not even close to what no, his numbers are. No. He's sitting over five hundred against left-handed pitching. He's sitting two eighty-eight against uh, righties, which is still very good, as you mentioned there. Uh, seven of his twelve stolen bases coming against right-handed pitching. Three fifty woe, but still really good. Only a one forty ISO. So obviously, we know the power numbers come against left-handed pitching, but. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I am perfectly fine. Um, uh, if you wanted to do uh Ren Nifo there as, a, as the one off play, I wouldn't be stacking the Angels today with the righty on the mound. Their number is not very great, not very good against right handed pitching overall, but um, could could see that. Uh, I like Josh Smith. I, you know, we keep talking about him, myself, and Howard Bender on the shows. Um, as long as Josh Young is out, they're gonna have Josh Smith at third. He's 4K again. Six of Sanchez is letting up runs every time he's on the mound like to the point where the coach was like 
if he's going to be a big league pitcher, he has to stop putting us behind the eight ball to start every single game. And the next start out there, he gave up like three runs in the first inning. Like he just, he just gives up runs. So uh, I'm good going with Josh Smith there at 4K. Yeah. And Josh Smith, um, not to be confused with the Atlanta Hawks, Josh Smith, uh, hitting third in yeah. this lineup. So like, I mean, your stack of Semyon, Seeger, Smith, Adolis, although expensive. I mean, that like it is a very profitable approach uh, early and often against six. Yeah, I think that, you know, one of the reasons where I looked at this pitching slate and I kind of gravitated towards the mid tier and then liking Soriano today is because you know, we'll get the shortstop. You're going to have to make a decision whether you want to not play Corey Seager, the best player right. in baseball right now, right. or you play him and then you got to figure out a lineup around him with the rest of the 13 games that are on this slate. Uh, I mean, he's got eight homers in eight games. It's it's tough to fade uh, with Sixto Sanchez on the mound. So um, we work our way down the third base tier here. Um, Mark Vientos against Jordan Montgomery. Vientos numbers against lefties are monster right now. Now, small sample size, only had 40 at-bats this year. But you look at his splits, he's doing a ton of damage against lefties. Montgomery has not pitched well. Um, you know, we want to save some value at third base here today. Mark Vientos is a guy I'm looking to plug in. Yeah, I like the Vientos call quite a bit. Uh, you because you're not going to find much power, um, at 3,400 and I said 300 even in that small sample. Only other name I'd throw out there, uh, it's not the the better end of his split because he's better against lefties as well. But Joey Ortiz for the Brewers, sure, um, against Fetty. I know Fetty's been fine, uh, but Ortiz has. Little speed, little power um, has been really, really good for the Brewers. Sure. OPS. Yeah, uh, just again, small sample size for Viento. So just to pull up the numbers, put them in context. Uh, he is eight for 19, 421 batting average, uh, yeah. two over three homers, uh, 520 ISO uh, in 21 at plate appearances this year. So again, small sample size, you know, bad lefties, whatever. But again, Montgomery has not been uh, very good right now. So uh, moving on over to shortstop. Uh, talk about a loaded tier where Seager is the yeah. fifth highest priced shortstop here. Uh, you have Gunner, Witt, Mookie Betts, Abrams, and Corey Seager. But as I mentioned, um, Seager, for me, just the way he's playing right now, matchup against Sixto Sanchez, I, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what the case would be made not to play him right now. Dude, he does this every single year. He has a stretch in the middle of every year where you're just like, that dude. I wish he stayed healthy more. <laughs> it's like he's just always good uh, for and like has these like monumental stretches and you just play him um, during those stretches. So, yeah, I mean, there's no like wrong answer necessarily. But like even when you look at everyone else, Seeger has the best matchup of the five too. Yeah. like in of the five guys that are above 5K. Um, you could probably make the case for Mookie as well. But um, Seeger's been. Yes, Seager, uh, Gunner, lately. and Mookie. Yeah, Seager, Gunner, Mookie have the better matchups, obviously, but you know you're saving money on Seager, so like, you know, yeah, better. Value I, I'm, I am, I am a Savali. I'm a Savali truther. So okay. all the peripheral numbers suggest Savali is going to turn it around. So I'm, I'm, I'm sticking my hat to that as well. Yeah, well, I understand that this may not be the spot. Uh, and I, I may mean, or may not. Been, Gunner's been okay. The power numbers have been great. It's been for him. the power. He's only hitting two hundred. Like he's just. It's uh, the power, right? It's just. Yeah. It's been like. I mean, two fifty eight, two fifty eight average, eighteen home runs. He's. It's, it's a lot ridiculous. of ball or nothing. Ridiculous home run power. Uh, Mid tier, we have Adamas at home versus a righty, and Eric Fed. Uh, obviously, those are the bingo card numbers for us with Willie Adamas. If we want to go there, uh, hitting three hundred with a nine hundred OPS over his last ten as well. So. Uh, hitting a hot streak at home versus a righty, uh, feeling pretty good about that spot. Bichette, 44 against Falter, uh, good to continue to run him out there as well. Yeah, both those guys for me, for sure, in the mid-tier um, stand out more than anyone else. Obviously, like, we'll see on the Lindor front, um, but everything came back negative, uh, but that is obviously his... Yeah, he was day to day for the for the um the Thursday slate. I don't know if we got an official 
um, you know, at the time of this recording, the Mets lineup yet. So uh, we'll see if he's in or out. Uh, he was, you know, uh, we do. He has actually, he's leading off today. Leading so, off. All right. So then we should expect Lindor here in this, uh, in this matchup for the Mets. Better. This is the, the split that he's been best at his whole career. Too. Yep. Agreed. Uh, value at this position here. Anybody sticking out to you? Caballero, if he gets on, he'll steal against the righty. Um, he's fine. Uh, Blaze Alexander won't play probably because of the split. Um, I don't think so, unless you have anything. Um, not really. Uh, again, we talked Hamilton already at second. He could obviously plug in there for you. Um, if you wanted to, you have JB Crawford's $2,900. If you weren't in on Soriano, uh, maybe you, you take a, a peek there, but, um, that's, that's pretty much it for me. At Brett, short. Wi- Brett wisely for what it's worth. Um, I mean, Hey, like there's obviously regression on the way, but those numbers are, yeah. if you just wanted an absolute punt near min salary, he's hitting 455 over his last. Yeah, that's fine. Lefties have given Stroman a little bit of trouble this year. Uh, moving on over to the outfield again. Elite plays up at the top. Kind of pick your stack and 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 plug. Um, you know, I really can't say a bad thing probably about any of these top like eight guys. So, um, yeah. do you have a favorite? I guess here, James. You're asking me if I have a favorite between six MVP candidates. <laughs> that's what um, I'm saying, right? <laughs> uh, no. Um, I mean Otani. Right. Soto, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So, whatever, whatever your stack is, like, it basically comes down to like, Adonis. do I have sixty two hundred dollars left over? Do I have sixty four hundred dollars left over? Right, like, you know, kind of building your your lineups around there. Uh, what about the uh, the mid and low K fives? Christian Yelich um, has been amazing, um, doing a little bit of everything. So I'm going to go there against Eric Fetty in my Milwaukee stacks. David Fry, um, we mentioned him earlier. I saw a tweet uh, on, I think, Thursday after he had his first at-bat end in an RBI single. And it was like, when Stephen Kwan returns, and don't kid yourself if if you're not on the DFA David Fry train or something like that. <laughs> I was like... What is happening to yeah. the world? He's hitting 350. I understand, like, where this is not going to last because, like, David Fry is not. Yeah, he's a 29 year old, you know, like, drink. But hey, you know what? Sometimes these guys do just, like, pop out, you know? Adolis, like, Adolis Garcia, anybody? Yeah, this, um, this have, like, a random season where they just, you know, they go out there and they, they bang home runs and, you know, it lasts for a year and then uh, they move on. But, like, I mean, left handed pitching has been the, the split that we want. It's Patrick Corbin. Sitting 419 against lefties with a 370 ISO and a 790 slug. So, you the know. The guy priced <laughs> right below him is the example that you gave, Brent Rooker. Like, yeah, there are cases of players that, like, just start being better later. Uh, and David Fry is the case, especially against left-handed pitching. This year. Yeah, and you know what? Fry last year still had almost a 200 ISO against left-handed pitching. There you go. So, you know, like it's not like he's he's complete anomaly there. Right. Um, you know, I don't know. Corbin Carroll probably eventually hits out of it, but I'm not going to go there. Um, did lead off. Did lead off the other day. I know. Uh, which is, uh, they're trying anything to move him around the lineup. Three hits and a lead out of the leadoff spot is definitely double digit fantasy points in three of the last four. You know, he's he's a fifty six hundred dollar player if he was healthy. You know. Playing like he did last year, right? Where, so, where do where did we hear that before? Last year at the beginning of the year when he was thirty four hundred. Yeah, we like, played him. We played him for two months. <laughs> we're like, he's a five thousand dollar player, and yeah. he was obviously playing like it, and he's not this year, but no. still. Uh, let's see. What else do we do here? You said you're a Savale guy, so probably not going Mullins. I mean, we can't. I'm not. I'm also not like. I'm not like saying he hasn't pitched. Great, but right. when you look at the numbers versus all the expected stuff, he's just been very unlucky. I like Wilder Brayu. Same, he's been really good against right-handed pitching. Yeah, and Kenta Mayed is obviously nothing to nothing special there. Um, I mean, Randy Orozarena, man, what happened? Yeah, he's that's bad too. That's what happened, man. 
Willie Castro, uh, JD Mart, 4K against Montgomery. Still hitting lefties. Yeah, still hitting lefties. Definitely a spot. Um, yeah, I mean, how long is he a Met for this year? We'll see. We'll see if anyone needs a, a DH. A DH. <laughs> yeah, but um, he can still he can still uh, bang against lefties. For sure. yeah, you got Duvall at 38 versus lefty and Sears. Springer gets faltered, 39. That's waking up. That's waking up there. For sure, for sure is um, getting some some potential value out of that matchup. Uh, Freeman, as we mentioned, thirty seven hundred dollars. Uh, you meant you called him out the other day when we did the show. Came through with three hits in that matchup in core. So uh, you, if he's leading off again for them, you can certainly uh, give him a, a look at thirty seven. Um, let's see what else do we got down here. Any value? Gavin Sheets is thirty five. Jacob Young thirty five. Yeah, Kirilov, I mean, against Blanco has a split. He's been good. Really. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we are twins stands. So, like, Kepler, Kirilov, Larnich, Julian, yep. you know, you wanna, you'll want to. you never scare us away from a twin stand. Never, so. ever, ever. Ever, ever. ever. So, uh, you know, if you, we're not a believer in – I'm not a really a believer in Blanco based off his fan graph numbers. They all scream some level of regression coming his way. So, why not Minnesota? You know, right. why, not? why not? Agreed. Blake Perkins, uh, 34. 100 sure and, had a homer the advantage. other day. Yeah. McCarthy's 34 as well. Um let's see. Freilich 33. Anything else down here? They've been playing Paven Smith. He's 31. They play Paven Smith every year for a stretch, and look how it turns out the same for Paven Smith. Every it year. does. It does. Did Baltimore every- reclaim Tyler Nevin? No, okay. They're just they're just leaving him on their team, even though he was let go by the Atlant- the Athletics. Oakland, yeah, by um... um Siri. You you saw the Siri homer today? Which one? Uh, the, of of, of, Mason, of Mason, Miller. Mason Miller. I did see the did highlight. See, was there a bat? Was there a bat flip? <laughs> yeah, but it's actually going more viral for the call, um, um, because the A's announcer uh, was like. Uh, what was it? He's oh, like, hey, I, it's just hey, not your theory. day today, like, or something. You what? It's just not your day, or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. something like that. He's like, "Hey Siri, it's not your day," or like, like she's calling out for Siri, and then uh, he homered on the next pitch. So, uh, you know, bad, bad, bad vibes there for the A's uh, announced team. There uh, didn't work out for them, but uh, two homers today again. We don't think Suarez is all that great. So, yep. uh, it's, if Siri gets hot, he's got some stolen base potential. You got him at twenty nine. Uh, that's probably it though. I don't really see much else down here. I, I would, if you're stacking Dodgers and you need someone cheap, Miguel Vargas, $2,400. Okay. He's been pretty good since being called up. Um, at least would you go Kyle Stowers, Stowers? Who's been decent. Yeah. I think there's, I think that there's a couple of Vargas Stowers, both like former top prospects too. Um, sure. either yeah, one Vargas the outfield, huh? Yeah. 2,400 playing in the outfield. Um, he's kind of been good. And we know, like, in his during his time, he's been better against right-handers um, than he has been lefties. And like, they're gonna play, do anything they possibly can to not play Chris Taylor. So sure, um, you know, they already sent Outman packing, and Chris Taylor's time in the bait in baseball is probably coming to an end, considering he's hitting a hundred. So yeah, uh, I, I like Vargas for cheap. If you're especially if you're trying to stack some Dodgers here. All right, so we got. A lot of build. I just plug Seager in because I think we're. In I mean, Seager here. Smith. Seager Smith probably in general. Like, just yeah. Given the Smith's gonna hit. The only problem is, I guess, with Smith is you're not playing Jose Ramirez. But <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, if we, I can't. If we get Jose Ramirez in a third and Seager, that gives us forty-seven fifty. We have no pitchers. Um, we, Soriano, Soriano, yeah, so Soriano for sure at seventy-three. I should, want to just build out the rest and see what we can. Sure. Catcher spend downs. Um, let's see. Austin Wells or um, Patrick Bailey's been really good. Bailey's been good. I'm trying to see like the, who's got the Corbin matchup here. Naylor. Uh, kind of, kind of sucks. I know it's it's the tough it's a tough split. Mm-hmm. Where's um who's pitching for uh what about uh Kybert? 27. He's been really good. Yeah, Kybert has been really good. They got, uh, where is he? 27? 2700. I mean, it's Bybee on the mound, but like, 
just for a punt dude, yeah, well, and he's good. He just had a bad start to the year. He's been yeah. super good. Yep. Uh, first base, we said like you were either spending up, but we might as well just go to Nathaniel Lowe here, right? Yeah, keep... Nathaniel Lowe. Yep, keep the Texas train rolling. Uh, since we didn't play Josh Smith, uh, forty seven hundred for second. I think we go IKF. Yes, yeah, so I don't think there's any other. All right, so that gives us 5K for outfielders and a pitcher. Let's go back to the starting pitching here. Um, I like Reynaldo Lopez at 86. I'm good with Reynaldo if that's – Because that gives us 4K in outfielder, and we we, we have a value down here that we could – Stowers or Vargas. Stowers or Vargas. Yeah, just, just plug for in. Punting. Yeah, for punting. Let's see. Let's get the better matchup here, Vargas versus Hudson. I'm good with going Vargas here. Better I, lineup. I think, it's a good, I think it's a good spot. All right, so now we got 4,700 for two outfielders. If we just played with it, we have Soto, we give us 32. Um, if you went Adolis, it would give you 38. That's not bad. We go Adolis, 38. You give us a Ranger stack. Duvall or Freeman, right there. Yeah, that's that's good. And we Let's go Freeman, go Ramirez. Bingo. Look at that. We, we, we figured it out. I mean, we could go cheaper and go Fry. That's what we want. Then you have nine hundred, so you probably move up from from, from Kybert, probably. Oh yeah, you could move up from Kybert. Right? Um, where was Fry there? Fry forty eight. Forty eight. Thirty six. Thirty six could be or hundred off. off Elg- Murphy is El Gary or Connor Wong. Yeah, that's probably. True. Um. Yeah, Wong. That's my it. It works. He'll be. He's better at home. All right. Example on it for everybody. I guess we could have also used that money on Ramirez, right? We had nine hundred dollars. You said ninety four. Was ninety four gets his Bybee? Let's go full Cleveland there. I mean, it's not even. We're we also that that nine hundred. We would have probably gone back to Kybert, and then we would have had catcher versus our pitcher. So. That's fair. Uh, Soriano, Lopez, Wong, Low, IKF, Ramirez, Seager, Vargas, Fry, and Freeman. We got a little Rangers stack, we got a little uh, Cleveland stack, a couple of one-off value plays to make it all work for us here. Uh, again, Grande will be on your playbook, and he and I will be back live at 4 p.m. Eastern time uh, to break down all this news and happenings that go along throughout the day. But we appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't already tossed a like down, it's a free way to support what we do here on the Fantasy Alarm YouTube channel. Until then, everybody, good luck, and we'll catch you later.